Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today's video is sponsored by Trade. Trade sources the best coffees around the country and brings them right to your doorstep. So I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people that often get overwhelmed by all the different options when it comes to things like coffee. But Trade makes it easy. They personalize coffees to my taste and preferences and it gets conveniently delivered right to my doorstep. I always look forward to the bright red compostable bag that arrives in my mailbox. And today I received Irving Farms New York Coffee Montserrat Colombia. So Trade Coffee is top notch. They partner with over 55 local roasters. And my favorite part is that my coffee is roasted to order. So when it arrives, I know that'll be perfectly fresh. So if you'd like to try a trade for yourself or gift it to a friend, please click the link down below to receive a free bag with any subscription purchase. Big thanks to Trade for sponsoring this video and for allowing me to make better videos for all of you. Alrighty, my lovelies, today we're gonna to be tasting a treat I found in the frozen section at Trader Joe's. I love Trader Joe's. I've been going there since I was a little one with my mom when it was a tiny, obscure little spot. Everyone still wore their Hawaiian shirts. It wasn't this kind of viral thing all over the place. My mom had some very specific things that we would get there. And one of the favorite things that she would do that I also love to do is to look for the new items, new treasures, love to kind of peruse the different sections because they often bring weekly nearly new items, things you may not have seen before, things that might be familiar. But what my mother loved and I also really like about Trader Joe's is the fact that the quality is great, the prices are wonderful, and there's always something to discover. It might be something that you've never heard of or might be familiar with, but you're saying, oh, at that price point, yes, let's give that a go. And so this is a case in point. I was in the frozen food section and I found these four chocolate croissants, which are my kiddo's favorite. He loves chocolate croissants. We get these as a treat from our local bakery, often on the weekends, but these are frozen. So I didn't think much of them like, oh, frozen croissants. That's totally worth trying. Good price point, And there are four, which I was a little bit perplexed by because this box is kind of small. But when I read the back, I understood why. So <laughs> these are frozen and I thought you just simply needed to rewarm them. Nope, 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 nope. You are actually going to cook these. So there is some preparation involved to get freshly baked chocolate croissants or pain au chocolat at home. Now, if you want to make croissants from scratch, I have done it. And there's a fantastic recipe by Claire Savitz, the one I used, absolutely fantastic. It is a labor of love, but if you follow the recipe to a T, you will get the most wonderful croissants you've ever had, and you made them yourself. It is a incredible recipe. I'll put a link to that video down below. Just absolutely stunning croissants. So you can use that same dough to make your own pain au chocolat or chocolate croissants. The typical croissant is shaped like a crescent or a horn, but the pain au chocolat has a little bit of a different shape. It's more oblong. Once it proofs, it's a little bit more square and rectangular. Here, I'll show you what's inside this box. So here they are. And inside the box are the croissants. Look at them. They do not look anything like a chocolate croissant, but what we have is laminated dough. So croissants are a wonderful pastry from France. They are considered a laminated dough, which means the dough is layered with layers of fat. In this case, butter, which gives it flavor. And of course that wonderful texture, just sublime, wonderful experience that crisp, slightly chewy experience, just so flaky. And of course that big pop of butter fantastic. So what makes croissants a little bit different is there's some yeast in the dough as well. So that gives you some puff. The yeast grows, creates carbon dioxide, and then gives that layer a little bit of a lift. So it makes it even extra fluffy. Just wonderful. So what we've got here is laminated dough. You see how it's been folded and the folds give you layers. And right here, the two little eyes of the pastry are your sticks of chocolate. There are two sticks, one on each side that go all the way down. And that's the traditional kind of form of a pain au chocolat or chocolate croissant. So there are two of them here. You want to place the seam side down on a piece of parchment or a buttered pan. 
So just like that, give them a lot of space, at least four inches or so. Now you wait. So this is perfect for breakfast. The night before you want to eat your pan au chocolat, you take them out of the freezer, place them on your countertop just like this, nothing, nothing covered, just let them warm up. And they will gently, ever so gently, warm up and begin to poof. So nine hours later, you get this. Look at that. Look how much they get bigger. Aren't they so stinking cute? Look, compared to this. I mean, they double, that, uh, that's more like quadruple in thickness. I mean, that's a thick little friend there. So stinking cute. Love, love, love. So as a kid, chocolate croissants were my favorite. I have distinct memories of my dad picking up chocolate croissants for my brother and I at Le Petit Boulangerie, which was like a chain here in the US. And the chocolate croissants were my favorite, but I always felt like there wasn't enough chocolate. At any rate, next we're going to bake our proofed croissants. So to make the croissant even more beautiful, we're gonna crack an egg. This is described on the directions, but is not necessary. I think it is because you need to have it look gorgeous and shiny. So we're gonna beat up one of our hen's eggs. Beautiful. And then we're gonna glaze our croissants with the egg wash. If you've got an egg in your fridge, I think this step is pretty important. It's gonna give you that really gorgeous, shiny look on top, and it's gonna be nice and golden. So if you don't have a pastry brush, I think you could still do this by smearing it with your fingers. Although I recommend getting one of these silicone ones. You can reuse it and they get nice and clean. Okay. Now, look at those Shauna bebes. We're gonna pop this into a preheated 350 degree oven and cook it for 25 minutes. And then we're gonna have freshly baked chocolate croissants. Alrighty, see you mom. Alrighty my lovelies, the croissants are finished. Look at them. Look how stinking gorgeous they are that came out of the freezer absolutely incredible look at those layers boom oh that looks gorgeous yes highly recommend the egg wash look how golden that is Alrighty. so the box says that we need to allow these to cool for about 10 minutes before we eat them <laughs> good luck with that so i haven't even tasted this yet and i am impressed super impressed my kitchen smells incredible buttery baked good yumminess the results look incredible i mean yo look at that the rise was gorgeous i have to say i was a little skeptical because it was so flat and sad and small they poofed up beautifully and then when i put them in the pre-warmed oven they poofed even more absolutely stunning. So for a little side-by-side -side comparison, I went to my local bakery this morning and picked up one of their chocolate croissants. So this is a chocolate croissant from Seven Stars Bakery, a local bakery here in Rhode Island. You can see that the surface is a little bit shriveled because it's cooled off and shrunk. To compare the size, this is a little bit bigger. You can see the chocolate in this one. This one, of course, is going to be better because it's right out of the oven, but I wanted a little frame of reference, so I got a professionally baked one as well. All right, let's use my serrated knife to cut the... All right, so that's this is the bakery one, and there are two sticks of chocolate in there as well, right there, doo -doo -doo. nice big holes. Boop, boop. Nice little crispy slice when I cut into it, two pieces of semi-sweet chocolate inside, and let's give the bakery baked one a taste. Alrighty, here we go. Itadakimasu. Mmm. <laughs> so good. I got a really delicious bite. And this croissant, both of the sticks of chocolate were leaning to one edge. So it got double the amount of chocolate. Oh, so good. Semi-sweet chocolate, not too sweet, lots of chocolatey flavor. The 
croissant is simultaneously chewy and fluffy and flaky. I mean, listen to the crunch. Mm, you can kind of hear the crispness, but the layers are fantastic. For me, a croissant is about the butter and all of those beautiful layers, those really thin layers of pastry. It's just a wonderful experience. Mm-hmm, mm, mm. And buttery. Mm-hmm. Buttery, flaky, yet chewy, delicious. And then you put chocolate in it. I mean, can't beat that. Alrighty, let's compare that with the Trader Joe's frozen version. This is a Trader Joe one, and I'm gonna listen to that. I'm trying to be gentle with my slicing and not to crush it, but it's very light and airy. Here is the interior of the Trader Joe's one. Pretty airy and holy if we compare it to the store bot. This is a store, this is the bakery bot. This is the Trader Joe's. The chocolate is melted in this one because it's still warm. Not bad, right? Oh, it smells so good. This one's hot, so all those aromas are just right there. Here we go, Trader Joe's. It's Hilaki Moss. Oh my goodness. So good. The bakery has no chance. It just doesn't. I mean, like their croissants, but you just cannot beat baked goods right out of the oven. You just can't. It's warm. The chewiness is chewy. The layers are flaky, yet still moist. Mmm. The chocolate is melty. The quality of the chocolate is about the same as the bakery version. It's a semi-sweet, not too sweet, not too milky, not too dark, just right. But, mmm. Mm. This one is melty. So you get that luscious sensation of like melted chocolate and the flavors are enhanced because it's warm. So incredibly good. Mm-hmm. So good. Would buy these again in an instant. I love the fact that you just have to think about defrosting them overnight and in the morning you'll just have the most sublime little pastry with your morning coffee. I just, oh, so, so, so very perfect. I would wager most of us, unless you live near a bakery or live in France, don't have the opportunity to have a freshly baked croissant like this. I just, mmm, so good. Mmm. This is also very buttery and it has a great kind of flavor that comes with yeasted bread. You know, that lovely yeasty bread flavor. Just so fantastic. And it is especially good for my palate because I've been avoiding wheat recently because it gives me skin problems, but on occasion I indulge with a few bites and it's just so good, so good. All right, my lovelies, there you have it. The frozen chocolate croissants from Trader Joe's. I would say one of the best things I've ever had from Trader Joe's. Just so stinking fantastic. Alrighty, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching and big thanks to Trade for sponsoring this video. If you'd like to try Trade for yourself, click the link down below to receive a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends, follow me on social media, like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. Um, I'm so good. Oh. Now it's time to make a cup of coffee so I can have my second cup of coffee with a warm chocolate croissant. <laughs>